Hi everyone and welcome to this video on exponent and index laws. Now really exponent and index means exactly the same thing, but let's not get too carried away about this. What is the lesson going to cover? Well, basically what is an index? How to multiply them, divide them, zero powers, negative indices, product rules, powers and quotient. It's all very exciting really. Now look, Basically, long story short, you've been doing indices since well, day one, like year eight, really, depending on where you are in the country. I did it day one of year seven. That was traumatic, and I still remember it to this day. But look, it's not going to hurt in a year 11 context to just go over it one more time. So straight into it, what is a floaty number? You're going to turn and say, a floaty number? Don't clouds float? Yeah, clouds float. Very excited about clouds floating. Um, yeah, clouds float. But actually, long story short, so do numbers. And here is a example of a three, what is floating? Um, yeah, it's important to note that it's also called a power, an index, and an exponent. All right, so that's important. What does x cubed mean? Yes, we all know that x cubed is the same as x times x times x. It does not mean 3 times x. So I'll put a massive cross through there. We use this power notation to tell us that the same thing is being multiplied over and over and over again. And in fact, that many times. Now, I'm going to recap how we multiply indices. But look, come on, we, we've been doing this. But it's very interesting to note that one of my students actually walked up to me recently and went, ah, why is it that this isn't true? And I'll come back to that in a second. But if I look at x squared times x to the power of 4, when we multiply the bases and they have to be the same, we add the powers. So that's why 2 plus 4 gives me 6. If we write it out in long form, expanded form, then x squared, as I say here, is x times x. It just means take x and multiply it by itself. x to the power of 4 is 4 of them. And if we look at how many x's we have in a row that are all multiplied together, then yes, it is x to the power of 6. Easy. I should go, go. So other examples, let's say, um, let's not start with a number. Let's do x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 10. Are they the same? Yep. Are the powers? Yep. Do we times them? Yep. So I'm going to do x to the power of 14. I'm just adding those two numbers together. Uh, what about b to the power of 3 times b to the power of 10? Yeah. Just add them together. b to the power of 13. And the great thing is that actually this works with negative numbers as well. So if I had z to the power of 2, and that's very confusing, times z to the power of minus 2, then actually what happens is when we add those together, we get z to the power of 0. And 0 is a really important term. So 0. Hello, you. Come, come. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to 0, my most wonderful puppy. Hello, 0. Yes, I called him 0. Weird, huh? But why? because he's one of the most important numbers in the world. And he's also an important dog. Say hi, Zero. Hi, Zero. Now, bye-bye, Zero. Bye-bye. Go play. Yes. No, I'm not gone. I'm gone. Wow. So there was Zero, and we were looking at the Zero power. But we'll do that in a second. Now, what about dividing indices? Well, when we do something forwards in mathematics, it's also good to know that we can do it backwards as well. And what do you mean by that? Well, when I had x squared times x to the power of 6, when I times two powers together, then I actually added them. So x to the power of 8. Well, if I'm timesing and adding, when I divide, I subtract. Absolutely. Now, so in this situation, x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 2. Are the x's the same? Yes, they are. Are the bases the same? Yes. And so the exponents simply get subtracted. 4 minus 2 is 2. But why? Well, x to the power of 4 is the same as x times x times x times x divided by x times x. Now, when I have fractions, and I know that all the tops are multiplied together, and all the bottoms are multiplied together, then it's nice and easy, because all I need to do now is, yes, do some cancelling. But I need to remember that although x times x is equal to 1, when I cancel the through, I have to realise that what I'm doing is saying I'm dividing both of those by an x. Those 1s become really important. So x divided by x becomes 1 over 1. That is a 1 over 1. And if I simplify this, I get x times x times 1 times 1, which is x squared divided by 1 times 1, which is 1. And we all know that I can actually just delete that because I don't really need it. So here are some other examples of divisions. Um, x uh, to the minus 3 uh, divided by x to the 6. Remember, are they the same? Yes. 
dividing, we're gonna take them away. So that becomes x to the power of minus nine, because I'm doing minus three, minus six. Um, doesn't have to be x's, it could be m to the power of 10 divided by m to the power of four. Are the bases the same? Yes, we're dividing, so I'm gonna subtract, which gives me m to the power of six. And in fact, it's gonna actually work when I group letters by products, and we'll come back to it in a moment. So ab to the power of four, divided by AB to the power of three will just give me AB to the power of one. Why? Well, the brackets say treat this as one thing. And so we can use my index laws. Now we've already met zero, bless his heart. Is he gonna come back if I say zero? Nope, he's given up on me because I'm talking to a camera and he thinks I've slightly gone mad. But this zero index, what does a zero index actually mean? Well, I'm pretty sure you've already been told anything to the power of zero is one. Anything to the power of zero is one. And you get it beaten into you, which you then promptly forget. But why? One of my students said to me recently, why is anything to the power of one, uh, zero, one? And I went, do you know what? I don't know. And one of my students, year 10, Lawrence, turned around and I went, well, actually, I know. And I'm like, then the board is yours. So he came over and he went, well, ask yourself, what is x to the power of one? divided by x to the power of one. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know this because I'm using index laws. So it's x to the power of zero. And he went, yeah, but x to the power of one is just x divided by x. And I'm like, oh, OMG. Anything divided by itself is in fact one. And that's true of absolutely anything. Two to the power of zero is one because that's effectively saying two divided by two. Three to the power of zero is one. 3 divided by 3, x to the power of 0 is 1, x divided by 0, x divided by x, and so it goes on. So this zero index stuff is really, really important. It's one of those party tricks now you can pull out when you're out, I don't know, when you're out at lunch or in the canteen going, you know what guys, I actually happen to know why anything to the power of 0 is 1. Don't do that. The whole canteen will clear. You, you won't see anyone for dust and probably your school career is over. But as I've said here a moment ago, we now have the question about what about negative indices? Well, I've just said we can use negative indices, but what are negative indices? Well, we've met them in hyperbolas. We've met them in trunco. We've met them in anti-differentiation and differentiation. And if you haven't seen those videos, they're amazing. In fact, they're coming soon. But uh, basically a negative power is chosen to use or define that we've moved something from the denominator of a fraction to the numerator or the numerator to the denominator. That's all it actually means. So you're gonna say, huh? Well, look at my examples. I've got one over x, which is actually one over x to the power of one. Well, if I wanna move this from the numerator to the denominator, sorry, from the denominator to the numerator, get that the right way around, I've already got the one there. I'm gonna times it by the x to the one, but I have to put a minus sign in to say it's changed position from below to above. This one over x cubed. The one was already there. I'm gonna move the x cubed up, but I'm gonna put a minus sign in front of it to say, hello, I've made it different because it's moved from the bottom to the top of my fraction. And the same thing with this example here. Notice how the power of four only belongs to the g. So it's b, g to the negative four. It's not b, g all to the power of negative four, because that would make absolute no sense. So do these rules work with negative powers? Well, I've already pretty much stated they do. Let's just check. So if I had uh, three to the power of minus two uh, multiplied by three to the power of six, well, I'm multiplying indices together. So the base stays the same and minus two plus six equals four. Now, this is coming back to that question because one of my students said, well, hold on a moment. Shouldn't that be nine to the power of four? And I'm like, why would it be nine to the power of four? And, and he was like, well, three times three is nine, and then you add, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Because three to the power of two, uh, minus two is actually one over three times three. If you don't know why, have a little bit of a think about it. And I'm gonna multiply that by three times three times three times three times three times three. Well, extending that over, because I can, then a three on the bottom cancels with a three on the top, three on the bottom cancels with a three on the top, and by that I mean they all become ones. And how many threes do I get left with? I get four left with. And he was like, ah, oh, but I still think it's nine. And I'm like, yeah, no, but you're gonna have to break that down. You're gonna have to do enough examples to prove to you it isn't the case. So with the numbers, you don't multiply the numbers together. They are just the bases. Uh, let's do a division. Let's do x to the power of 10 divided by x to the power of minus two. 
and what I'm dividing. So I take away my powers, which strangely gives me x to the power of 12. Why? Well, we've got x to the power of 10 divided by, now what is x to the minus 2? 1 over x squared. Keep, change, and flip my fraction, because we don't really divide. And what do I get? x to the power of 12. So these things are freaking awesome. But one of the most, oh, and I love this, is powers of powers. Why powers of powers? Well, look at 2 squared all to the power of 2. We know that that's 2 squared times 2 squared. Remember, when you square something, you're multiplying everything inside the bracket by itself. But we now know that that can be written as 2 to the power of 4. Yay! What about this one here? Uh, 3 squared to the power of 3. That's 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared, which is nothing more than my index laws again. I have the same base. They're all multiplied together, which suggests I can add my powers. So I can write that as 3 to the power of 6. Hold on a moment, 6. 2 times 3 happens to be 6. And I had 4 a moment ago, so 2 times 2 happens to be 4. OMG, once again, I've come up with a bit of a rule, and actually that's true. When you have a power of a power, you literally multiply the powers together. So x to the power of 5, I can now simply go and become x to the power of 20, because 4 times 5 is 20. And that works with absolutely everything. And, and one of the great things is when you get to methods 1 and 2 or A-level or whatever course out there you're going to do, algebra, you'll find something called a product and a quotient. And here are my two words, product and quotient. In methods 1 and 2, we use the product rule and the quotient rule to help us with differentiation. Now, I'm talking way, way, way down the future. But what's important for you to know is that product rule means times, and the, quad, uh, the quotient rule, easy for me to say, is anything that's t uh, divided. So let's look at what happens when things are multiplied together. The long way, AB squared means AB times AB, which is the same as A squared times B squared, when we do a little bit of shifting around. But look at what happens when I actually have a to the power of 1, b to the power of 1, all squared. Well, all I'm doing is exactly what I just did there. I'm multiplying every single power inside the bracket by my power outside the bracket, and it works every single time. So a squared, b, all cubed, is the same as a to the power of 6, b cubed. And what about this a plus b cubed? Can I do... Nah, I can't do this. Why can't I do this? Well, remember the rule is called the product rule. Right? or it only allows you to do it for products, but this is a plus b to the power of 3. That's a whole new thing. It's called binomial expansion, and I'm not doing that now. Long video. So that doesn't work for there, but this example absolutely works. Why? Because I get 3 to the power of 4. Now, please remember that numbers also have to be raised to the power. This is really 3 to the power of 1, which I then make 3 to the power of 4, x to the power of 4, y to the power of 8, and z to the power of 12. Don't leave it there. Why? Well, because when we have numbers to the powers, generally speaking, unless the question says otherwise, they want you to leave it. Uh, sorry, they want you to expand it. What am I talking about? So 3 to the power of 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now, are you already there? Yep, well, 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 3 is 9, and multiply those together gives me 81. How many of you out there were going 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 27, times 3, I don't know what that's about. There are always easier ways of doing things. No shortcuts are, are flipping awesome. So I would now write that as fully simplified form as x to the 4, y to the 8, and z to the 12. And I'm putting that little line through the z just so I know it's a z. Quotient, when things are divided, and it works in exactly the same way. Everything inside those brackets gets multiplied or raised to the power even with that divide sign. So this longhand would be a over b times a over b, because squared multiply by itself, and we know that would be a squared over b squared. But inside my bracket, I know that's a to the power of 1 divided by b to the power of 1, and I've got a power of a power. So it becomes a squared over b squared. Same with this one here. So let's just test as it were. Yep, I get x to the power of 6, y to the power of 3, divided by 3 to the power of 3, remember the number has to be raised to the power as well, over x to the power of 3. Oh, oh hold on, I can do simplification. I can make 3 to the power of 3, 27. I already knew that. 
And I've got x to the power of 3 on the bottom, which I can cancel with 3 of those on the top, because there's 6 x's on the top, 3 on the bottom. So they cancel. 3 on the top will cancel with 3 on the bottom, leaving us just the 3. And so writing this in simplified form, we get x cubed, y cubed, all over 27. And it works with numbers. Please don't think this just works with letters. It works with all sorts of stuff. 1 half to the power of 4. So that's 1 to the power of 4 divided by 2 to the power of 4. Well, 1 to the power of 4 is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which just happens to be 1. And 2 to the power of 4 is 2, 4, 8, 16. Yes. Nice and easy. I'm loving this power stuff. Now, to sort of give a bit of an introduction, and I'm almost at the end of this video, I promise, but to give a bit of an introduction, square roots all right, are called rational indices. And so the square root of x can actually be written as x to the power of a half bit of a trick and one that's used all over the world. So I can now rewrite this and the brackets are important because it still needs to be given in terms of all of this is the power of a half. So I've got a power of a, how and a power of a power and don't worry about the fraction it works in exactly the same way. So 4 times a half is 2. A oh that's 1 times a half is a half and 8 times a half is 4. And so if I was going to write this out, I'd end up with the square root of a times b to the power of 4. Now, two final things from me. One, notice how I did a and I did the square root sign so that it was definitely included under that a. In exams, examiners get really, really upset because it's bad notation. If you did this, for example, a to the power of 4 and you did that. Because the examiner may turn around and say, and in fact will turn around and say, because he doesn't have to prove anything to you, you have to prove stuff to him or her. And so they may turn around and say, well, I don't know whether that's finishing on the A or is on the B. Even worse, if you have a bit of a flick, that was a really bad flick. So always make sure you do your letter, your square root sign, and then B to the power of 4. And last thing from me, remember that actually this A, B to the power of 4 thing can actually work with numbers. So imagine I had 12 to the power of 4. Well, I know that 12 is the same as 3 times 4. And we know that AB to the power of 4, two things inside the bracket that's multiplied together, can both be raised to those same power. Well, the same is true here. So that could be 3 to the power of 4 times 4 to the power of 4. Now, if you do 12 to the power of 4 on your calculator, and that on your calculator, you'll get exactly the same answer. All I've done is written it in a different way. But I could go one further, and that could become 3 to the power of 4, 4 can be written as 2 squared, and so finally, 3 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 8. And again, put that into your calculator, they'll all be the same thing. Why on earth would we ever want to do this? Well, sometimes questions will try and trick us, and they'll give us different numerical bases and ask us to simplify it, and it will be a trick of trying to find factors and multipliers and whatever else, but maybe I'm talking too much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patronage. If you'd like to see more or you have liked what you've seen and you haven't already done so, please, please, please subscribe with the circle thing there, and there's another video loading for you on the other side. Please stick around, say hi. It's been great having you, all right? I hope you're enjoying the videos. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.